Video Fashion Models, Top Models of the World, is the ultimate model competition series. We're counting down 100 extraordinary catwalkers from every corner of the planet, from the land down under to the Far East, from sultry South America to the U.S. heartland. We're ranking each region's most stunning strutters. In this program, we're counting down the major models from the country that has long been known as the land of poets and thinkers, Germany. Get to know Tony. I was walking down the street and then the booker from uh, my mother agent now came up to me and asked me if I wanted to be a model. Claudia. I like to be in control of my work, yes, of my professional life because, uh, you know, there's so many things going on and if you have a big project where you have a big responsibility, um, you have to be responsible. Heidi. I do definitely see, you know, the fashion industry from all the sides. And when I think about when I started, I used to be always the fit model. So I like that I really got to, you know, climb from the very bottom. Kati. In the fashion world, I think it's so good to be only happy to enjoy your life. And it's the best for me now. Julia. I was actually discovered when I was um, 15 on the Oktoberfest in Munich. That's a big beer festival in Germany. <laughs> Nadia. Somebody found me in, the, in a cafe in Berlin, the sky, and I went straight to Paris and I started modeling. And Tatiana. I grew up with my brother, so I was a complete tomboy. I got, into, I got into more trouble than he did. Watch and find out which of these seven German gems is number one on our list. And you too can choose your favorite. And to kick off the countdown at number seven, it's Kati. My name is Kati, Kati Nescher. I'm from Germany. Kati's pristine complexion, ultra feminine features, and powerful gait helped catapult her from new girl status to one of 2012's busiest runway models. We met Kati backstage at Marnie, where she was about to open and close one of Milan's most buzzed about shows. It's the first season in Milano for me. I have a good feeling. <laughs> I have good people for me. They work really good for me and I'm <laughs> I try to do my best. It's the first time that I opening and close the show, so I'm so excited. It's really amazing feeling like you can fly. <laughs> and the collection is really beautiful. It's so colorful and uh, so a little bit like the 60s with the hair and the makeup. First outfit is yellow, really pretty dress and the shoes with the socks. It's really great and the bag. And the last is a nice skirt with the flowers and the really beautiful carrot jacket. It's gonna be great. Though she fits right in with a legion of teenage girls who dominate the industry, this 27-year-old's thriving career proves that persistence and maturity are a winning combination. I actually did not so good experience for the first time. I want to try it again and read something about my mother agency in the magazine. And after some couple of months, I, I, I wanted to try it again. I'm so happy because you never know. I've done Paris. Yeah, I go to Paris tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be a great season for me. A great season indeed. After hitting the Paris catwalk for Alexander McQueen, Louis Vuitton, Valentino, and Stella McCartney, Kati continued to rack up runways at the fall 2012 shows, covering an astounding 63 catwalks in just four weeks. I feel good. Um, sometimes like a little bit nervous because, you know, everybody look at you. For me, it's like the feeling to go out and to do your best to, to try to keep all eyes on you. Sometimes, you know, you feel sometimes strange and so, but in the fashion world, I think it's so good to be only happy to enjoy your life. And it's the best for me now. 
So I really enjoy to go out and walk and to feel it like the energy. For me, it's like the energy. Continuing the countdown at number six, meet Tatiana. Back in the 1990s, Tatiana Patitz was no stranger to magazine covers and fashion editorials. She was at the top of her game during the supermodel era. I grew up with my brother because we were only 14 months apart, so I was a complete tomboy. I got into, I got into more trouble than he did in that sense, you know, and I pulled him along to do every little naughty thing there was, you know, but we grew up in the country and, you know, got up to all kinds of crazy stuff like I loved horses and I pretended my bicycle was a horse, I put a pillow on it and shoestrings and like went into the forest and just over rocks and, you know, really, I don't know. Had a very imaginative childhood that way. I need nature so much for my well being, you know, my spiritual well being. And that's why I moved out there and live out by the beach. And I like being, having space being not, when I'm not working, I'm not working, and I'm not, you know, I walk around in just jeans, no makeup, I'm out at the, with my animals, or I do, you know, I write, and just work on other things, study, and I love to read, and things like that. I have to get away from it. That's my, that's my salvation, in a sense, of getting away from it and not being in it 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. I've never been like that. And that's why I got so involved with animals, with, you know, things in the, in, around, like, you know, the, the ocean and, and stuff. It's all very connected to us. different options you make yourself you know you um, become part of a group like uh, Earth Island Institute or Greenpeace or a smaller even more independent group for the environment because without the environment we don't survive so um, through that way or you can write a book which I want to do one day anyway so and kind of bring the message along and I think also if you're more out in the public eye people listen and people you know you get actually people interested and conscious and that that is something that is the best thing about what I'm doing because it's an advantage and that's one thing that I really really want to do. These days Tatiana spends her time on the other side of the camera lens working on a documentary about wild horses and enjoying nature and motherhood at her home in Malibu, California. At number five, it's Catwalk Cutie, Tony Garn. Hi, I'm Tony Garn. I was um, 14 years old in Germany. I was walking on the street and then the booker from uh, my mother agent now came up to me and asked me if I wanted to be one. I never thought about it before. I didn't even know what models were. I never even thought about it. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I went to the agency like a week later with my mom and then we talked about everything. And then I slowly got started. I started with Calvin Klein. I went to New York half a year later when I uh, started. Then I did um, Calvin Klein exclusive for the show. Then I did the campaign exclusively. So I was with them. And then the next season I was exclusive again. So I kind of, which was good because I'm still in school. So I couldn't do anything else. and. Um, it was really uh, easy to do both then, but now um, exclusive is gone, so I did it for one year, so now I have to do everything, which is more fun, but of course it's harder because I have to do all the fashion, like all the shows, and, and it's tough with school, but it's, it's fun. It's really interesting because I was always, always into Calvin Klein, and now I get to see how the other people work and what their different things are, because because of course Calvin Klein was um, a great start, but now it's even more fun seeing the other designers because it's lots of differences. 
Between the catwalk and the classroom, this busy beauty didn't have much time to spare when she first started modeling. They know that twice, twice a year it's Fashion Week and then it's like two to three weeks I'm gonna I miss, but um, I never do London so I come back for a couple of days. I go home between Paris and Milan, which was hard this time because it was only a day in between, but I went home for four hours of school. Um, then New York, I try and keep really small as well, so I never take like a whole break. I always come back, I always go back and forth. I never stay long, I never stay like one night longer. I always leave like that minute. I mean, in the beginning it was super weird going back and then sitting with your classmates and mad or whatever, but now it's normal. It's like my life, I'm used to it. My three best friends were with me when, my, when I was scouted, so they know I didn't go to an agency and was like, hey, I want to model. Like, they all know what, what's it like. At the beginning, of, of course, it was like, oh, what's she doing? I guess everyone was looking, but now it's normal. Like, someone else does sports, everyone knows I'm a model, but no one really talks about it. I'm in school. That's why I can't do anything else, hardly. I can't, take, I can't really go on vacation, because I'm going to have a holiday in school, I have to work. So, it's basically only school and modeling. I played the piano for 10 years. I took lessons. I played tennis, like, had practicing every week and everything. I did lots of stuff I can't really do because I'm hardly at home at, anymore regularly. So when I'm at home, I'm just in school and see my friends if I have time. Oh my god, my grandma's the biggest fan. She has a whole book of me, and then every week she goes to her friends and she always takes the book. She's like, look what's new. All her friends know exactly what I'm doing. It's really funny. At number four, it's runway regular, Julia Stegner. She may be a superstar today, but in 2005, Julia Stegner was just a rising star on the modeling scene. I was actually discovered when I was um, 15 on the Oktoberfest in Munich. That's a big beer festival in Germany. <laughs> I was standing on the street and the owner of my agency, Luisa Models in Germany, she just saw me standing there with some friends and she came by and she asked me if I want to be a model. But then I didn't really want to start modeling because I, my, my priority was always first to finish school and then maybe think about modeling. So that's what I did. I finished my school and then I started basically one and a half year ago with the shows in Milan and Paris. In the beginning when I started like one and a half year ago, I didn't like it that much because I started right away, like I started and it happened like right away. I haven't been home anymore. I, I, just, I was just traveling and I missed my family so much and my boyfriend and my friends because you're not used to it. Usually you're home, you went to school and suddenly you're away. And it was hard in the beginning. It's not that I didn't like it, but I just, it was just really hard for me. But then you get to know the people, then you get to know the cities and now I actually love it. I enjoy it so much because I love being in New York now. I, know, I have friends now. I know my agencies, my bookers, my agents well, so I can get along with them. You all just have to grow into it, I think. I was tall, I was always taller than the boys, so in the beginning I had, when I was like, so until I was 14 I had kind of problems with it because I felt like, I don't know, when you're taller than the boys and you don't stop growing, I was kind of afraid that I get like two meters tall, so, um, but then it, now I, I kind of think it's something special, you know, not everybody is that tall, so now I really like it and it's good for my dog. I play basketball actually, I have a team in, in Germany, I have, um, I play in a club there and yeah, that's what I do actually and when I go home I try to play as often as I can. That's my biggest hobby. I'm okay. Our team is not the best, I have to say, but we're we are okay. But I'm center, I'm usually under the basket because I'm tall. Parts. Oh my god, there are a lot. I mean, it's great that you get to travel so much. Like, I went to places I would have never gone, maybe, you know? And then you get to know a lot of people, which is nice. And um, you earn a lot of money, which is a really nice part, too, you know? And I think it's also, like, for later, like, when you're older, it's nice to have those pictures and look back at it and, like, say, oh, you know, that was me when I was 18, whatever. And I think it's great, like, you know, it's just a great opportunity in your life. It's a nice experience. I mean, not everybody can have that experience. So I'm, I really, um, I'm happy that I'm, that I, that, that I can do that, that I have that. Coming in at number three, meet Nadia Auerman. Hi, I'm Nadia.
Somebody found me in, the, in a cafe in Berlin, a scout. And I went straight to Paris and I started modeling. I'm very simple, I'm a very simple person. Sometimes can't believe it myself when I see a picture. In 1995, Nadia Auermann, with her crystal blue eyes and six foot frame, transformed herself into an ice princess. Her new haircut, which was dyed platinum, was called the Concord Cut. And like the aircraft, Nadia's career was on the move. I think fashion is also about changes and reinventing yourself. It feels good because I feel like new again, you know, like I'm newborn or a new model again. Auerman's ability to reinvent herself throughout the late 90s made her a favorite of designers. Nadia, I used to be for everybody. I have to say I love him very much because he speaks my language, so we have the same kind of sense of humor. Nadia Auerman represents um, a type of a contemporary woman, like very idealized, and she is like a girl from the moon. She is so light, she is so transparent. I can be a femme fatale, very, very sexy, styled. I can look a little bit like a man. It's always depending what the designers want you to look like. It can be very ladylike, I think, I hope. <laughs> In 1997, Nadia took a break to become a mom. It's quite a job actually having a baby, you know, it's like I'm a model and a mother, so it's like two jobs that demand a lot of time actually. I'm taking a little uh, more time off for me for my private life, also to be a good mom, I think that's very important. At number two on the countdown, it's supermodel Claudia Schiffer. Claudia, Claudia. Claudia, up here for a minute. Claudia. Claudia. In the heart of the supermodel strata stands Claudia Schiffer. With hundreds of magazine covers to her credit, the German-born beauty's career started just over two decades ago when she became the original guest girl. You have to know about the business side of it in order to make the right decisions. And I like to have things organized and detailed and um, just, you know, make sure that, that, that I, when I create something that's just a quality product. The stunner secured contracts with Chanel and Revlon, dabbled as a restaurateur, launched a website, and she's even tried acting. You can be. <laughs> Is that right? That's right. So what would you do? Might have to do something to his girl. Like what? Depends. Whatever turned on, whatever excites him. Talk about lucrative looks. In 2012, Schiffer had an estimated net worth of approximately $40 million, easily out earning her fellow supermodels. I like to be in control of my work, yes, of my professional life, because, uh, you know, there's so many things going on, and if you have a big project where you have a big responsibility, um, you have to be responsible. I'm very critical about me, so I always have things that I don't like this, and I don't like this, and I don't like this, very critical. I'm not um, trying to be sexy or anything like that. I'm, I'm really normal and uh, rather natural than... than uh, than the girl that everybody sees. I was so afraid as well doing shows because, because I'm basically like a shy person and to go out there you have to have a lot of, uh, you have to be really strong and, <laughs> and don't care about all those people. But um, I managed. <laughs> For me, she is more than a model, she is more a legend. I mean, she, <laughs> next to Lady Di, she was the most famous legendary blondie of our time. While Claudia continues to model occasionally and reappeared as the face of guest jeans in 2012, she has also started her own fashion collection, an eponymous line of cashmere designs. It is glamorous and it's a, it's a fabulous job. I think it's one of the greatest jobs you can ever have as a, as a young girl. And at number one, it's bombshell turned business beauty, Heidi Klum. All of a sudden I won this contest and um, the world changed for me. Winning a local modeling contest was just the beginning for German-born Heidi Klum. It's no wonder that she became one of the most sought after talents in the fashion and modeling industry. 
you grow up very fast in this business. I don't know if that's a good point, but you do. And you learn how to stand on your feet. It's not all about beauty and just looking beautiful. You have to be strong and you have to be professional. You have to have a goal in a way. I always wanted to do Victoria's Secret. I just wanted to be part of the glam and part of all the big girls. It took just over 15 years for Heidi Klum to transform from simple swimsuit girl to a modeling mega brand. I think Heidi, um, first of all, has an incredible fashion career. You know, she has been with Victoria's Secret for some time now. She was constantly asking her agent if she can get in to see Victoria's Secret and they were saying, you're not ready, you're not ready. So finally I saw her for a casting and she was perfect. She had straight brown hair, great voluptuous body and we thought she looked a lot like Elle McPherson. Like the Aussie beauty, the young Heidi Klum made a name for herself with Victoria's Secret and Sports Illustrated. She has parlayed that popularity into a multitude of business ventures as well as hosting duties on a top reality show. She's had that the perspective of the fashion industry. She has an understanding of what it's like to be in this industry. And I think that's part of the strength of, that she has in being the host for Project Runway. Yes, she has seen it through the eyes of a model, even in her own business as a jewelry designer. She's had that um, experience that, that is very important to understand what it takes to really make it in the business. She's grown into not only a great model, but a spokesperson and a television personality. And she really took her talents and expanded them. She's always up for anything. You know, she wants to be one of the angel flyers. She wants to wear the biggest wings. She's come up with a cosmetic line for us. She started her jewelry company because she met the guy that did her million dollar bra. So she just knows how to network and you know work with her assets. Heidi is incredibly likable. In a way she's very German because she's very direct. You know Heidi's always happy. Heidi is always very optimistic and she is also very approachable and I think that's what people can relate to her because what you see is what you get with her. I do definitely see, you know, the fashion industry from all the sides and when I think about when I started, I used to be always the fit model for a lot of the designers. I would literally be in a room from morning to night and I could never say anything and they would put me in all these outfits and, you know, they were like, always, oh, this has to be tighter and shorter and different color and now I can, you know, choose those things or it, it, it's just fun that I can really see everything. But that time was fun too. So I like that I really got to, you know, climb from the very bottom. It was, it's, it's been a fun journey.